This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn-deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women Seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> the cream of the crop, but it does it better. Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RBT Entertainment on Podomatic, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else may find this fine ID work recording and live on RBT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel. We're talking about professional wrestling, both for the mainstream and the independent scene. My name is Matty J. That is TWK. You do. I'm sorry, T Dub. T Dub. All here is a lot of static and not a whole lot of song. Ah, bugger. Yeah. Good effort, kid. Have some steak. Ooh, I love steak. That's delicious. Steak and a burrito. That's makes Ooh, it even better. Steak burrito. I I need to have. It's been it's too been too long since so I've had a good steak burrito. Anyway, joining us, ladies and gentlemen, is the one and only Shin Tiger Curl. Okay, hold up. Hold up. We got to do this right. I got to send a shout out to my boy, Monkey. Monkey, you're going to get through this all the time. You're, you're going to get Hi, back Eddie. in. God damn it. <laughs> Even on a podcast, I can't get rid of you. What is what you guys? What do you want? What do you want? That's been the running gag since yesterday on Riff Zone, as I have found out. Uh and and Eddie Kingston just took a bite of my drywall. Oh, and you didn't put a cake there? There was a cake. He ate the drywall out of spite. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you invite 2.0 as well. I didn't invite 2.0. They just appeared. You know, you really ought to consider getting some security. I tried. Not enough money. Yeah, nuts. Yeah, anyway. How are you guys doing? Are you guys doing good? I have a cup of Dr. Pepper, so I am fine for the evening. Got some Arizona iced tea on my end. I don't know. How about you uh, there, Shin? Got a can of um, A&W root beer. Fresh very, out of the fridge. Very, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. See, we're, yeah. we're, 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 vamp we're vamping to doing the thing and hi, Rob! It's evil, right? It's been too long since I couldn't make it to the WrestleCast. How's everybody doing? Swell, my friend. Swell. How are you? Uh, How's good old. Huh? This is, it's amazing to see you here. And that also reminds me, let's give a shout out to a person that we have not heard from in many, 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 many months. Hope he's doing well. That being French. It's been too long. It, look, he was the only email being sent, and everyone else said I migrated to uh, interacting with us live on the chat room. It is what it is. But hey, the, the email is still there. There, we'll still read them. You know, we, we always. This is going to be a slow week, despite the fact that uh, no, we got a lot to get through. True, but we're not doing Survivor Series. That's true, but still, just on the news side, it's a bit heavier than I thought it would be. Also, really? if you have any like Q and A stuff for Andrew Taku or anyone listening in, send them to the Russellcast at gmail dot com. We'll read them. We'll read them. And uh, by the way, the reason I said uh, hello to Reverend, he had just uh, subscribed to Tier One uh, for forty two months, as a matter of fact. So much thanks to you, sir. 
And Mike Shell with a tier one sub, 40 for nine months. And with this payment, 49, I'm one more way from getting a free plastic spork, spork fork from KFC. Nice. By the way, that reminds me, Maddie, what episode number is this? <laughs> uh, four, nine, five, 99. Next week Ooh. is the big one. 600 shows it technically should be close to 650 but i did you know i took you know half a year off for for my own brain and not wanting to choke Vince mcmahon more you know too late right you, but still. you don't like to watch the thunderdome hey dude retribution got me back that should goddamn tell you what the fuck really really teed up really we're going there come on this is a, this is a, this is a this is a classy show. Can we just get beyond Thunderdome? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Suck it, Linkara. Thank you. <laughs> and Spoonie, I hope you feel better. But we 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 got to point we got to point to the thing. We got to point to the you know. Yep. Out of legal obligation, also a Turkey Day marathon happened in MST3K season thirteen. T Dub, they got a El Santo movie on the list. Very nice. I enjoyed the last time they did No Santa movie, which was ages ago, so it's good to see them do another one. Folks, uh, when that show, when that appears on the Gizmoplex, you damn right I'm reviewing it on the show, first chance I get. Is it still Netflix? And no, it got cut from Netflix. They're doing, they're producing, they're self-producing this time around. They got the Kickstarter, got, got a shitload of money, and they're going to do their own app and their own thing. Very nice. Uh, I can't wait to watch that because, like I said, last time they riffed a Lucha movie, it was great stuff. I believe it was El Santo versus uh, Van- the Mummy? Uh, hold on. Uh, we need to Google this. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll Google it. We'll tell you after the clip. How's that? Very nice. Yeah. All right, Maddie. what is the clip of the week? Well, before we do, we got, of course, we got our usual stuff, our winners and losers. And ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we you know, it's, it'll be a, pr- a truncated version of what the wrestling fuck, but y'all know what the fuck happened this week. And that's just a fucking egg. We're talking, we're doing a what the wrestling fuck. So strap in or strap on or whatever you want to do. But uh, yeah, we're definitely doing the thing. But Folks, clip of the week. You know what the fuck clip of the week is, by the way. How could it not be clip of the week? But goddamn, it was so tough to pick to, to pick and choose. This entire segment should be clip of the week, but it's a twenty minute clip. So I had to whittle it down to some of the, some of my favorite bits. Not even the best bits, just some of, some of my favorite bits. Ladies and gentlemen, the promo battle. For those wondering what the fuck I do on TikTok. This, this is what I do. Uh, less professionally, of course. MJF and CM Punk, let's get to it. Take, uh, take, prepare thine ears for just the truncated part of what the fuck this was. Good Lord. Take a listen. You didn't want to go toe to toe with me on the stick, Punk? Well, too bad. Cause I'm about to verbally finish you quicker than your UFC career. He thinks he's somebody. He thinks what he does is revolutionary to the wrestling business when in reality, he's just a less famous Miz. Do you people think CM Punk can do it? I'm glad they think that now, punk, but are they gonna feel that way in a month, two months, a year? I don't envy you, man, but I know you envy me. And I know why you don't like me, PG Punk. I know why. It's because I represent everything about this business that you hate. I'm every single thing you hate because I was born for this. Oh yeah, I'm a clean-cut professional. I'm every single wrestling analyst, promoter, and pundit's wet dream, while you, on the other hand, were a scrawny, tatted-up misfit from the dumpiest part of the Midwest known as Chicago. You had to work your tail off to become the man you are today, and I commend you for that, but I know what keeps you up at night. I know what eats you up inside. It's the fact that after all your hard work, 
all your blood, sweat, tears, and sacrifice you've given this sport, deep down you know it, and these people know it. Your whole career, you've been nothing more than second best. Whether it was the you can't see me man, or the king of kings, you were never quite up to snuff, were you? And I can assure you, now that you're standing in my ring, in my company, things will be no different because you may claim to be the best in the world, but I'm better than you. And you know it! There's some truth in what you just said. A little bit, scared. Coming back after seven years, a little bit. See, I'm not gonna lie, not even to you. I certainly never lie to these people. I didn't know if these people would remember me. I didn't know if these people would care. I didn't know if I still had it. But trust me, I'm not scared any longer. Certainly not scared of you. Because the timing might not match up but I was selling out Madison Square Garden when you were marking out for Rosie O'Donnell. You talk too much. Yeah, just like me back in the day, except I always backed it up and you can't back up shit without your backup. FTR, Sean Spears, Wardlow. That's how you get things done around here, and I never mention you in interviews because I never had to. I looked at AEW and I said, wow, that's the place I want to be. That's the place I want to test myself. And I went for the heart and soul of AEW, Darby Allen. And boy, that just chews you up, doesn't it? And I beat Darby Allen, and I didn't need a ring to do it. You're too busy talking about how you're the most powerful of the four pillars. You don't even realize you've been replaced by Britt Baker. Pro tip, Tony Khan. When you're putting together the, 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 the promo, the video promo video before the match, ACD sees who made who. It'll pay for it. It'll pay, pay you can you can afford it. <laughs> who made who? Who made you? Ah. Oh. It, it was really, the first it was the first thing I could think of. <laughs> if he could if he could really swing it. He'd have ACDC perform that at the pay per view that this goes down. Nah, it's not. I don't know if he could afford ACDC live, but he can... dude, I know he can't afford Final Countdown because Europe are pricks, but the band Europe are pricks. Uh, but ACDC, uh, overplayed, yes. Overrated, fine, but you're not going to change my mind. ACDC is fucking awesome. And Evil Rev says, I got no sense to, but I can play the Song of Healing real quick. A good idea for both gentlemen, by the way. For those wondering, uh, if, I, if I judge uh, promo battles as well for the NGTTWF. Um, I have talked to some of, some of my fellow promo artists. We don't know who the fuck won. <laughs> like, I, get to, I know who if won. If it was shoot, we'd be like, fuck it, rematch. I know who won. The fans. Yeah, it's pretty obvious yeah. the fans won. <laughs> we yeah. won. And th there needs to be a round two. There needs yep. to be a round two. To, to put this in terms that people can understand, this battle would be like if Eminem took on KRS-One in a no hose barred um, battle rap. Jesus Christ, no one would be like this, pretty this, much. That's this pretty is like much if, what it was. This is like if Prime Michael Jordan took on Prime Larry Bird in a game of 21. Ooh. And somehow they'd still draw. This would be like prime Muhammad Ali taking on prime Mike Tyson in a 12-rounder. I want to see that. that. That's like the one thing, like, 
if that were to magically happen, I think that would sell out. And, and to even make it closer to home, this would be like if prime if if is if very very prime Eddie Guerrero took on prime Owen Hart, or prime Eddie Guerrero taking on prime Sammy Guevara. All good stuff. Just all good stuff. The comparisons are endless at that point. By the way, a little bit of uh, cleaning up. Uh, the official title, as according to the MST3K, uh, episode, uh, season six, episode 24, or 624, Samson versus the Vampire Women. All right. That's, that was the last one they did. And that was uh, the last episode featuring TV's Frank. And he actually got to choose that episode because yeah. it was the final one. And apparently it's because he absolutely loves Lucha movies. Can you blame him? <laughs> They're so fucking cheesy. But th- to be fair... What Superman was in the, in that era, so was El Santo. Yeah, El Santo was Pretty much. a big, huge deal in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, 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 to, to, to case in point, Adam, Blompier, Adam Blompier's uh, last uh, pipe bomb with what culture we talked about El Santo. Definitely, and it's still on the internet, worth a find. Worth a find. I remember, I remember worth that. seeking out. I remember that very good video. Very good video. It's worth seeking out. Anyway. So yeah, I, we'll 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 save at the AEW Dynamite for for when we get to that and that amazing promo that opened the show. It opened Dynamite. When's the last time they opened a tw- with a twenty minute segment of dudes on the microphone? Uh never really. I mean, that's that's a first. They, 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 people yep. knew people wanted to see that, and they delivered again. I just hope they don't make this a regular thing. I hope, I no, I, it, I, 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 I suspect it will not. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, one, one can assume. And he, and he knew this the exact two guys if, to give twenty minutes to. They did not waste a single moment. No, yeah. they did not. They did not at all. Tina, let's. I know there's. You said there's a ton of stuff to talk about. So, let's go. All right, staying on the topic of AEW. After the promo, Punk made short work of QT Marshall. Marshall. As JR likes to say, QT Marshall. By speaking of, I don't know if we'll get a chance to do so later, but get well soon, JR. Kick cancer's ass. Yep, yep. He's, he's going for skin cancer treatments, and he has announced that he will be off of TV for several weeks, but he's going to do his best to return for their homecoming in Jacksonville. Seems like a reasonable goal. I hope I hope he makes it. That would be one help. Whenever a show he does return to, crowds can get a huge pop. Absolutely, absolutely, and he deserves it. And you know, we shit on Jim Ross, honestly. I mean, obviously he's not in. He's obviously not in his prime, but he still has a passion for this. Otherwise, he would not be there. So yeah, we, we right. definitely don't in want all sincerity, we hope he comes back. We definitely don't want anything like bad to happen to his health. No. I mean, Goodness knows the guy's been through enough already. He's been for the ringer with, like, how many b- bouts of Bell pa- Bell's palsy? Uh, at least three. At least three. So, yeah, we, we don't need no more. Yeah, this guy's just, uh, it's just he's, he's been through enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dante Martin, shockingly, joined Team Taz. Who'd have thunk it, huh, boys? What a swerve. Yeah. Yeah, I, just I don't know if it's Russo, Russo worthy, but uh, there's a long term thing at play here. Yeah, he just he was in the room with them, signed contract. Leo Rush is like, no, 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 he doesn't need to sign a contract. Dante just like, nope, signs it, leaves with Team Taz. He even took a snack from Hook's bag. So you know it's official. Yeah, he, he took a potato yep. chip from Hook. He tried to hype him up. He's like, uh, D. Martin is made of money, He's, he looks like money. He tastes like, hold up, I'm out. Well, goddamn. This, this makes me so sad because I want to see them like be a permanent tag team and win the belts together because they're so goddamn good seeing them live. It's just like, fuck. fuck. You know what? I'm, I'm, I don't know. There's a long-term thing at play. He, he, is, he wasn't a tag team with another tag team partner. He's going to pop up eventually. This could yep. be a case of you could easily see in the promo and say, well, hey, it's the devil I, don't, it's the devil I know versus the devil I don't. I don't know who Leo Rush is. I, even after all this time, I know who Taz is. I know what he means. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Possibly. Could or, easily do that. 
Or he was just scared of Hobbes. <laughs> you know what? To be on the better side of Hobbes is not a bad idea either. Just saying. If I sign this contract, that man's going to rob me. Yeah, you must. You, you, you not signed the contract, you must got a lot of money on you, D. Martin. Uh, <laughs> no, and Hobbes. Of course, and of course, Taz, back there, no, no, he, he's with us. You're not, you can leave him alone now. All right, then. All right, Playboy. What about you, Leo? Solid 25-year-old piece of gold. You must got gold in them pockets. <laughs> we also saw the gun club squash bear country in an okay match, I guess. Yeah. 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 Can someone tell me what the hell is going on with the gun club's music these past couple of weeks? I... <sighs> I think they're trying to solidify them as heels more, or they're trying to make them sound like they're more heels. That that music is just not doing it. It for does me not it fit the gun club. Gun. No, that doesn't it does feel not. like gun music. I, I, I guess least. they're trying to be legally distinct as possible, but while still calling Billy Gun Billy Gun. I like the DX ripoff music more. Yeah. Uh, then at the, I'll say the best thing about this was. Uh, Darby Allen just shooting himself out of the tunnel at Austin Gunn. Jesus Christ. Jesus. They're trying to they're trying to find as many gifable moments for uh for Darby Allen as possible. No, we are we already we all know what that move was. The skinniest pouncer. Period. We've ever seen. Yes. Unless Marco Stunts does one, but you know. We're not holding our breath for this year anyway. Yep. Monty Brown would be very proud of that pounce. Yeah, There's just, people saying this is a downgrade, this is not as cool, but I'm like... It, it definitely feels like something that's just there to tie him over until the next big feud for Darby and staying. A cool down fuel. Uh, and not in the way of we're cooling him down, but I was like, well, we got to keep the momentum. we got to keep him on TV. But at the same time, you know, we don't want to burn through every opponent he could possibly have. And burning through the gun club is a, a nice little filler. And he and eventually he, be, he beats Billy Gunn, who is a legend, despite what yeah. we all think. Yeah. Better of the biz. Still looking as like he's in his prime. You know? And and, and Amy brings it up in the chat. He lost to Pep Punk and MGF. He needs a win. He already beat Billy Gunn on Rampage last week. But did he beat the one Billy Gunn? See, that's no, the point. Beat... That's the thing. As as Enigma points out, he beat the ass man. And the okay. Ad... okay, he's got to beat him three more times, each for his different personas. So and, for that, and, uh, but before we before continue, but gentlemen, for the record. And we move on. Yes. So he's got to beat the one Billy Gunn, and yep. then he's got to beat Rockabilly. Rockabilly. And then he's got to beat Cute Kip. Definitely Cute Kip. <laughs> and Road Dogs, got, and, uh, you know, Billy James, you know, BG James has got to be there. Paul Levesque, Michael Hickabottom, we'll see you at the Alamo. At the okay. Alamo. <laughs> I could definitely not do OSW's Alamo. Mo. It's Mo. like a mixture of an Irish Mo. and Southern accent, which is, I don't think is something you could do. No, it's impossible. Also, Mo. 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 <laughs> on a happier notes, on the notes here, uh, Thunder Rosa beat Jamie Hayter in a pretty good match, and more dissension between Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. Uh, yeah, in a great match, I thought, as well. My favorite match of the entire tournament so far. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think that goes without saying even JD, a few of the, the other wrestling pundits that we have happened to share the space with are in agreement for, uh, for me, it, Maybe it's because I saw live, but for me it's currently uh Hikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose. Fair. 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 Although Jamie Hayter. Yes, we get it, Shane. We got it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what were you we talking about? Yeah, we yeah, got you said Jamie Hayter. He's four. He... <laughs> a 
stops. It's not. It's not my fault. I mean, she's going around here being a great wrestler and looking like the God beat the crap out of her with a beautiful stick. And I'm like, how am I supposed to react? Do Do we need to find an eight bit version of Baker Street? Any bit version of a, a saxophone? That what it is? <laughs> do we do we need Speaking to do that? Baker, she also See, hosted Friendsgiving with Tony and Rebel. And Aww. Adam Cole's pissed off about that. But you know it is what it is. Anyone else and, expecting Adam Cole to bust in and beat the shit out of Tony? No, anybody, Adam's anybody? a peaceful man. No, no t- Tony found Tony has a way of distracting him. Yeah, wow. he just puts he just puts a halo. He just puts Master Chief's helmet inside of uh, Adam Cole's locker room, and he gets distracted by that for a good hour. <laughs> or, or the uh, or or he he could just put up the WWE War Games set. <laughs> you know, I was gonna go with a pack of Uno, Uno cards there. That way, not only would he would be distra- he would be so confused by his hatred of Keith Lee. But is that the sheer awesomeness of that playset? <laughs> oh God! I'm so upset! I'm so upset! Keith Lee, man, that set is amazing. Can't believe it. <laughs> and he just be pacing back and forth, and that will be enough of distraction for Ski of Own to get out of there. Uh, yeah. However, this Friendsgiving did not go without a hitch because. Tony, unfortunately, had to be the bearer of bad news, announced that tonight on Rampage, it's going to be Britt Baker versus Riho in a Black Friday deal match where if Riho wins, she gets a title match. After all, Riho was not eliminated officially from the Battle Royal during All Out. And, uh, of course, for those wondering, yes, we are still live at 9, so that means we will more than likely go over. I have the the, uh, set ready. These gentlemen were going to watch. If that match happens to be first, we'll we'll live react to it on the air. Speaking of, uh, starting next week, we will start at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I wanted to bring it up earlier, but, you know, comedy is comedy, of course. Uh, we're going to start at a half an hour early. Uh, that way we could do our show, a full 90-minute show. And if we go over for a couple minutes over Rampage, it is what it is. But uh, the idea is we'll get a full 90 minutes or as close to a full 90 minute show and give everybody some time to actually tune in and actually not have to have us jerk off so on the on the audio, sharing the audio here. So there's that. Yep. And speaking of there's that, Danielson beat the teeth out of Cole Cabana. Literally in this case. Uh, Cole Cabana's teeth went boom, boom. Yep. <laughs> Hope he's able to get, get them uh, placed back in there. More than likely. Oh, he's got a good dent. Hey, well, they got a good dentist on the roster. They do. Well, they got two di- two good dentists on the roster now. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the 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 tooth remover is uh, Mr. Danielson. The uh, the 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 uh, the everything else doctor is Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Yes. And in the main event, that was kind of just okay for me. Andrade Black and FTR defeat Rhodes and Death Triangle. Um, anyone else think take away Cody Rhodes, put in any other guy in this match is a, is, is a great main event. Probably. Yeah. I, think that, I think that Cody is just really feels, I think we've just gotten to the point where Cody just feels stagnant in his role. Unfortunately, we've been feeling that for a few months, but, uh, the, again, some crowds just jumped on, on, thought, Oh wait, he's about to turn heel. And all it was, was like him being Mr. America instead of being Homelander. I, he's got to know at this point. You know what? I told the guys on the Wednesday call uh, when we did uh, Dyna, when we watched Dynamite together, I said, when people in Chicago are throwing your goddamn belt back, you are worst baby face of the year. Also, how dare that person throw the belt at Aubrey? What'd she do to you? For shame. For shame, for shame. Also, he's part of what the wrestling, what the wrestling felt, but that's a minor thing at this point. And there was a dude right there ringside. I want it, I want it, I want it. And he froze it into the part of the crowd that doesn't want to do shit with him. What like, a why would you not just give it to the person that wants it? He must be doing this on purpose then. Right? Right? Maybe. I don't know. I wish Lots I knew... More- Oh, it's more general news. Game Changer Wrestling, Hammerstein Show, uh, January 23rd. Sold, sold the fuck out. And 
I'm assuming this has to be one of the reasons because added to the card will be Eddie Kingston. And you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know. If, I thought it was just a video, but it, 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 I thought it was just a photo, but it's a video. Eddie Kingston posting and all of a sudden 2.0 in the background. Hey, Eddie. No, nothing out of shin. What's or, up? Or, oh, no, I, was gonna say, <laughs> I was just saying, well, Eddie Kingston on the poster. No, it's, it was a video of him posing. Two seconds later, here's 2.0. God damn it, I can't even pose for a photo anymore. Ah, poor Eddie. Yeah. Just, just can't win. Get a win. Hey, we're going to run this to the, to, until I, I, until the, because we're probably not going to be able to do it next week, though. I'm pretty not sure Tina, so. she, she, Shane and I will find other ways to run that gag. No, that, but Eddie's facing Daniel Garcia tonight. Oh, that's right. That's got to be fun. That's gonna, That'll be a fun match. Yeah. Daniel's going to die. A, a lot. More than likely. I mean, it'll get... be a fight, but he's going to die. A lot. Before we get to the January 23rd show, GCW has a show December 3rd in Houston, Texas called How High. It's going to feature Ali Catch versus Gino Medina. That match is going to rule some ass. Oh, hell yeah. It's going to rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, Mike said, Shell in the chat. 2.0, the anti glorious bomb. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the reverse glorious bomb. Beautiful. Like beautiful. Nicely done, Mike Shell. That's oh. brilliant. Guys, if we, ever, if we ever are together in the next year, we got to do that gimmick. All right. We also have the fact that Gargano's contract seems to be extended through War Games, so it looks like he's pulling an Adam Cole on us. Yeah, and it's it's apt because that's exactly what it is. For those wondering, uh, his contract and was ending technically two days before, so the agreement was, hey, give me some leeway. I'll give you a couple extra days. I'll give you through the War Games of my services. After that, shrug. We don't know. If uh, if they're able to let him's contracts run out, he can go wherever he wants. Although with Candice LeRae's contract looks like it won't end until the spring at the soonest. Although they might add months on since she was pregnant and took time off. Yeah, Is so this might this, she might be in the, in the in limbo until the budget cuts happen. Yeah, which is another possibility. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, um. Hopefully Johnny will be able to put up some put up a good match in the uh, War Games match. I mean, who's in the War Games match? It's uh, old school versus new school. Braun Breaker's in there somewhere. Yep, can't be all that bad. It's got Tommaso Ciampa in there. Isn't Tony D'Angelo in this match? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Tony D'Angelo. I don't keep up with it anymore, but I hear good things about Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, he's, he's got good gimmick. He's got good uh, stuff in the I ring. I so. hated the buildup, but what the, the in-ring presentation, from what I've seen, you know what? I'll sh- we can shit on the vignettes, but he's so far so good. And you know what's great? The best thing that happened this week? In what's wrestling? up? The best thing that happened this week? What's that? Wrestle House 2! I missed it. I missed all but the half an hour. I did watch uh, behind... I missed the Riff Zone airing, but I uh, was able to catch it. And, uh, gentlemen, that was glorious. We need a Wrestle House 3. I think that might become their new Thanksgiving tradition. Poor Hernandez had to wear the fucking turkey suit. Those no one are, shall escape the wearing of the turkey suit. Those who didn't watch Wrestle House 2, essentially it's a parody of reality shows where all the where a bunch of wrestlers have to live in a house. And this time, uh, they had to be there up until Johnny Swinger regained his happiness. So Miss they were Hacker. basically st- stuck in there forever and ever and ever. Missed part of it because of Thanksgiving shenanigans, but what I saw was... Stupidly entertaining. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. If you want to turn your brain off, eat some popcorn and watch cheese, the cheesiest wrestling segments you could find. Yes. You just tell that everyone is having a blast filming this because there's just so many hilarious vignettes that they It's did. literally, be your character, 
less bumps, same pay, go nuts. Oh, and have fun. And it was in this special that we learned that the IPWF is 100% canon in Impact Wrestling's history. And they're coming back this December. And Riff Zone is going to watch this. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Folks, yes. so, folks. IPWF is essentially their Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, Impact's answer to Southpaw Re- Regional Wrestling. But yeah, taken yeah. to the taken to the to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah, because they actually film a show, just like the '80s studio show, in their own studio, and they like it's fucking fantastic. And also, the first one didn't have Sex Ferguson. Oh, you're right. This one is this. this oh God! This is why I went. Oh God! <laughs> like Chad, too bad, and Sex Ferguson. No, we don't need a talking shop of Mania three. What we're about to watch in a couple of weeks, censored as it may be, is Talking Shop of Mania 3. Get me Rocky Romero in there as well. As please. We oh, no, no, just, no 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 oh no no my god. Chico. About- we need Chico. Yes, we need Chico. We need Luchador. Chico. There's just so much potential here. Yes. The roster is so different from the last one they did two years ago. The possibilities are now endless. And the only thing that makes me sad is the fact that Sammy Callahan is injured, which means he won't be able to do his cornet impression. Damn. But you know what? That is a sacrifice I am willing to bet for Sex Ferguson promos all goddamn night. Yeah, that's... That oh is... A, that. Just realized Fondago is not working for the Fed anymore, isn't he? He is nope. not. He is a free agent. He may, he may not be able to call himself, uh, uh, not Lance Cameron, but, uh, yeah. Him and Breeze. Him and Breeze, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, have them on commentary. Oh, my God. By the way, for the Russell House matches, for people who don't know, the commentary, one of the commentators was none other than fucking Sin Bodhi. It's true. And it's folks true. don't know, that was the guy who was formerly Kiz Arnie back in the day for WWE. Long time ago. We're talking ruthless aggression long ago. And he was only there for like, what, two, three matches? Cup of coffee. Yeah. He Cup was, of coffee. Well, I remember, like, they had him do all these weird, creepy heel vignettes. Then they had him debut as a baby face for some reason. And then they were like, oh, we don't like the crowd reaction you got. You're cut. It didn't help that he he talked completely in Carney talk. Yeah, he, like one hundred percent. In the like, his name literally is Kizarni. That's literally a reference to the Carnies, and he would always do Carney talk, and that didn't exactly translate back. And right, for time. those wondering, Kizarni, uh, 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 Carney talk is is what it, you hear words like kayfabe, all that stuff. Yeah, whenever you, yeah, essentially when you hear Johnny Swinger talk, that's Carney talk. He, he is ninety percent Carney talk at this point. Kazay Fazay Dizadio? Did I just have a stroke? <laughs> no, that, that's just Carney talk. That's literally what it sounds like. We're talking to a Carney. I know. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel, Shen. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, God. I give mean, me some kids, Ash, and I'll be out the pay window. <laughs> Anyways, uh, See that's why that's, that's why Shin has to watch Impact with us. He he would he he would break his his mind would break three ways just watching more uh, Johnny Swinger matches. Also, I wonder if they're going to make Johnny Swinger look younger because this is back in the day. Oh, gotta get that makeup job done. That makeup Ooh. job done. Get that good makeup. The the, the face fair, but the body, geez, that, that's a tough sell. Anyways, uh, that's all the. Good news, Sam. Now all that's left is a certain segment that you want to do, Mr. May J. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Strap in or strap on, folks. It's time for that segment we lovingly ripped off an ash. We take a look at all the wrestling bad shit. With you in a segment we lovingly call What the Wrestling Fuck? Oh, 
Yeah. And um, I'm just gonna say this right now. We're gonna start with the fucking egg because that that I did not watch the virus series. We did to- we uh. Uh, we didn't do uh, Toker Rifts because we uh, the easy was unavailable at the time. We are back in a couple of weeks to do that, by the way. We are in the clear as far as schedules are concerned until Christmas. But we're doing the thing, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, well, they, 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 you know, they're doing the thing, and there's an egg. What? It's all in relation to The Rock's new movie, uh, Red, uh, the, the, fuck, I forgot the name of the goddamn thing again. Rock and Ryan Reynolds movie. Which is fucking hilarious, but at the same time, I fucking forgot it. Red Debt? No, that's not it. Red Notice. Red, thank you. Red Notice. Thank you, and thank you, Mike Shell as well. So they're plugging Red Notice. And uh, by the way, Survivor Series was the 25th anniversary of the Rock career in WWE. Guess who didn't show the fuck up? Hey, the Rock had time for Bound for Glory last year, at least. And vi- even how fucked up is it? That Impact Wrestling, Impact, did more with The Rock than W in, in like a throwaway Hall of Fame induction. Well, throwaway is harsh, but you get you get the idea. Impact did more with The Rock than WWE did on his fucking anniversary. I don't think anyone would have predicted that like ten years ago. <laughs> I saw that meme and I'm like. Wow. Apparently it was due to a scheduling conflict, but you think they would at least have him shoot something via video, just like video on the screen. Like you, like, could f- you could pipe that. It's all backstage shit. Pipe it in. Do something instead of what you did with the McMahon, who, I'm sorry, does not... How do I put this gently? Nah, fuck it. He sounds old. Well, he is he old. Is He's in his mid-70s. True, but... He sounds like he does not belong on TV anymore. He certainly isn't the very Mr. McMahon quiet, we all grew up with. You know, very quiet, very... He's very quiet, There's sounding a, frail. This is an egg that's worth a hundred million dollars. You're not Bob... You're not bro, You're not Bob Backlund trying to fuck up the audio guy. Yeah, like, this, his voice is shot, and I feel that maybe doing the Vince McMahon voice for, like, 20 years could not have helped. And you add the commentary on top of that. Like, this guy was a broadcaster pretty much the entire time until he became Mr. McMahon. And then he just put on this really gruff voice for decades. And it feels like for the past, like, three or four years, its voice has just been shot. If anyone's ever listening to those media calls, like, his voice is just really quiet and just almost non-existent. Which is why he doesn't really talk through most of those anymore. Makes so, sense. yeah, the egg, by the way, and so the egg is stolen, and here's on Raw, McMahon's pissed off, and they like, find me the guy, and if you want some motivation, whoever helps him find the egg has a WWE title shot. They could have got that anybody. Anybody. They went for Austin Theory. And he lost. On Raw. Now, I get it. Big E. Fair. You lost to Roman Reigns, and I did watch that match on the side. They had a good match. I have no complaints on it. I'm not going to review Survivor Series, because fuck them, but I watched the match. Fine. But Big E needed to recover his, uh, his, his, his heat. He didn't lose too much. He just flat out lost. Got his win back over Austin Theory, over the The head could have set it up for anybody and everybody. Austin Theory on Raw, and then Ag, the Ag will join the Red Hummer, or the White Hummer, and GTV. What the fuck? But Maddie, selfies, selfies. I mean, it's it's all on gimmick, fair, but no, no. Don't you get it, Maddie? Selfies, the kids, the things, the Twitters, the Instagrams, is is. Someone should tell Vince he's no longer cool. Yeah, he's he's gotten chilly, hasn't he? And chilly ain't never been cool. What are you talking about? What do you want? You want to do a selfie? What what is that? Is that some new some new way they talk about pocket hockey? <laughs> you want to a selfie? What is that? <laughs> oh, 
Oh well, Austin Theory, if you want to see it, I'll show you my genetic jackhammer. And now everyone in the room is scarred for life. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> and, and for some reason, so is Austin Theory, and he don't you know, don't even know what the fuck we're gonna be talking about. Get loud. So yeah, the egg storyline is just another one of men, of WWE's many... It seems like WWE is doing now many, many movie tie-ins. See, kids? We're cool. We're mainstream. I can tell you that uh, the corporate synergy here does not feel nearly as natural as when we get it with AEW when they did the whole... Uh, what was it? Uh, Looney Tunes gimmick with uh, the elite dressed up like them. As, as, as the Tune Squad. Yep. Yeah. And of course, then the elite dressed up like Ghostbusters. It works for them because they're a bunch of dorks and they do cosplay all the time. And they weren't even plugging, they weren't even plugging Ghostbusters. You, the original idea was, hey, we're going to dress up as the Squid Guy team. The Squid Game team, you know, because they're heels. And, they no. did, and that would have made a lot of sense because they did a Squid Game on their YouTube channel. They did. But no, TNT had, and one of the rarities, and they're rare, and it's a rarity, but they put their foot down. What? No. How, by the way, um, does anyone here subscribe to Aki Dearest on YouTube? No. Uh, she and a whole bunch of other people did their own Squid Games in Japan. Oh, nice. Hmm. Hopefully not as violent, I assume. No, nah, the, uh, the... Pink soldiers just had paintball guns. Yeah. Either paintball and, or... Uh, yeah. And it didn't have to be paintball guns because I believe guns are illegal in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh. the reason why I wanted to start this... Folks? Don't jump the goddamn rail! He is very lucky. This fan is very lucky that Seth was in a good mood and didn't murder him that night. <clears throat> so, Seth and Finn, they're, they're going, they're doing a brawl thing. Pull apart brawl. Seth goes to the back, and there's this d dude, and there was a video that did it clearly. He's jumping from the back of the stage all the way, and he fucking takes him down. Fucking tackles the kid. And, of course, people are, is this a fan? Is this a fan? Even the production is like, oh, wait, is that a fan? Oh, wait, 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 come back, come back. Uh, replay, replay, replay. They break it up. Dude is escorted, and the people are chanting lock him up and chanting asshole, as one should. It is New York. And by the way, that's a half-empty Barclays Center in Brooklyn, WWE's home market. Here's a sign. Guy goes on TikTok or Instagram, and he goes, well, I got, I got, I, I got, and he's, Showing full bad shit, crazy thinking. Seth Rollins, as Seth Rollins account went, uh, yeah, run me over. You'll be you'll you'll be put over huge. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two. All right, we're back. My uh, computer derped. Like the wire, the wire that, that plugs, that holds, the, that holds the, the thing derped on me. So that's why I hurt the thing. Uh, now, I can't get the OBS because Windows fought. Oh, you want to see the info thing? No. I'm going to switch back to that. Evil Rev says, get Twitch security. <laughs> See that the fat fuck trying to fuck up my mic. That's what happened there. 
I don't know if you heard the uh, the technical. I know, I think the technical difficulties thing went through. So that the, the worst thing is that the, the video will be no audio for a couple of minutes, and I apologize for that. <sighs> anyway, you were saying uh, so. Yeah, uh, Fact Fox shows up, and he goes on Twi- uh, on on whatever his social media is, and he's and he's del- a delusional fucking mark. Long story um, short. Hey. Delusional fucking mark. Understatement. Understatement. Just the vid. The, there was a video. You, if you wish to seek it out, I ain't got a fucking plan. I ain't putting that fucker over on my show. Other than just calling him, "What the fuck are you fucking doing? You fucking idiot!" Yeah, apparently this guy got catfished. Thought that Seth Rollins was trying to give him a contract, but anyone who has a half a sense knows that this is not how wrestling contracts work, especially in WWE where there's, where there's like fucking bureaucrats on top of bureaucracy, on top of bureaucracy to even. And I tried to explain the T dub that some marks just don't care about that blue check mark. They, they, they see Seth Rollins and they will go, okay. Like it's one thing. If it was like, Oh, his account got hacked. And then they went off and, uh, did this thing, but no, it wasn't even that. It's just a, it's a clearly fake account. That's clear and fake. I have a question. Sure. Is this guy in any way a wrestler? No. Then why would he think that the WWE would give a contract to a guy who looks like he fell into a vat of Big Mac special sauce <laughs> with no <laughs> wrestling training whatsoever just out of the blue? <laughs> And he's not the only one. There's this dude uh, a couple of years back trying to get in, enter the performance center, thinking he was he was signed. When turns out he was just fucking stalking the women. Creep. C- fucking creep. Uh, again, understatement. And Cyber Rider even says, "Plus, the WWE contract nowadays isn't even really a guarantee." Yeah. There are, so, but then again, there are there are marks out that are still thinks WWE is the best. And I'm like, you poor unfortunate souls. Like, you can't, like, at this point, I don't think anyone should trust anything on that contract. They should always have, like, ten steps ahead, planned ahead, just in case they get released tomorrow. Because they could. Because, unless your name's Roman Reigns, you could very well get released tomorrow. Even if you're Drew McIntyre. Yep. Also, as a reminder to people who want to try to do this thing, remember, if you want to get signed as a wrestler, you have to first be trained as a wrestler. As in, you have to go to a wrestling school where they teach you. You just can't roll out of bed one day and put on your uh, Power Ranger pajamas and pretend that you're in the in the wrestling ring and think I you're going to get one. I take offense to that joke, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'll Power refrain. Ranger pajamas. Okay, I'll rephrase. I'll rephrase. You just can't wake up, roll out of bed, and put on your tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills pajamas. <laughs> there you and go. And get a there and you go. Get a shot. There you go. Oh, that's a deep cut. Uh, deep cut, but I, I, you, all three of us got that and appreciate that insult. And uh, Enigma says, "Just ask Mass Transit." Yeah, that that just that ask Mass. Well. And uh, he, yeah. he previously, he, the guy looks like Ron Funches. No, he looks like if Ron Funches gained ten pounds. Also, Ron Funches went the right way about this, and it was an entertainer who was at a wrestling show by invite and then got involved with a storyline where he got to do a thing with Tony Deppin. That's mm-hmm. completely... He got consent. Yes, that's, that's the very big important thing, folks. Here. Consent is important. Where, yep. you know, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, they know they're about to beat the shit out of each other. It's so like, okay, let's go do that in the ring. But, like, the, Seth Rollins didn't know this motherfucker's going to jump the guard around and attack him. Like, what the... I don't understand why these fans keep doing this. Stop jumping the guardrails. Marks. Do- marks. They're stupid marks in their stupid head. In their stupid head who believe they can do whatever stupid thing they want. If you jump the guardrail, then you, in my opinion, do not have... I hope run. that fucking fan goes to jail. And he faces down yeah. the, 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 might, the might of WWE's legal team. Yeah, if you jump I the guardrail... I really hope. That then, fucking happens. Because he could have hurt Seth Rollins and he could have been done for a couple of months. Not he yeah. had that full head of speed that the fat fuck was going for, that could have cracked a rib. Or oh, God forbid he had a weapon. Because for those wondering yeah. where where that happened or didn't watch the video, he was on the entrance ramp. 
that, that that's metal on on I'm, I'm assuming ceramic or plating or something like that it's just a good thing that south was able to get a guillotine in there yeah which leads to my own two personal what the wrestling fucks oh, related oh, you to got some shin. wow all right one I, did i call it or did i call it holy crap yes you did <laughs> This first one, I had a lot of respect for this person, and then he just had to open his goddamn Twitter mouth. Chavo Guerrero. Speaking oh, no. of the fat fuck, yeah, this is related. <laughs> yep. He put out a tweet with the video saying, remember when wrestlers, I remember when wrestlers used to be tougher. All because Seth Rollins didn't instantly kick this guy's ass. There is a notional old school that I will always respect. And I get it. Seth had every right to beat the shit, the piss, to break his damn fool's arm. That's self-defense at this no, point. And I, you no, got I, every cell phone camera, including some of the cameras from the Fed, on on that shit. No, I think he meant the fact that Seth got taken down in the first place. Now that, no, that and. You, and pretty much every, you, everyone in that position, except for Big Show, Mark Henry, maybe Hulk Hogan. No, you're taken down, or you you are tripping up and tri hurting yourself trying to defend yourself. Yeah. Thankfully, MVP actually went to bat for um for Seth Rollins because, uh, in case you little marks didn't know out there, MVP actually is has a has a degree. In Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, he is actually a multi-time world champion in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so he knows. He knows how to stretch you. Yeah, he knows how to stretch, and he was like, "Seth put locked him in in a guillotine, classic, classic. He did it on instinct, and I'm proud of him." Yeah, but nope, everybody wanted to. Oh, Seth should have known what was coming. Seth should have. So okay, he should have known. Blah, blah, bing, bing, blah. What? First, how, how the fuck do you know of a fat dude, Mark? How, how how do you expect a fan jumping the rail going after you? You you fucking don't. And thankfully, somebody posted up a video of that uh, fan that tried to attack Stone Cold during that match he had with Triple H. And Austin keep in mind, didn't know he didn't expect it. All right, keep in mind, I'm from Austin's own mouth, he said he didn't know what was going on until he saw Earl Hepner and Triple H pound the crap out of this guy. And only then he realized the guy tried to jump him. He had his back completely turned. So no, wrestlers are not these all-knowing ass beaters who can take on anybody that comes at them. He got surprised attacked. Seth did the right thing and got a guillotine choke in him just long enough for the refs to pull him off of him. He was just trying to be safe because surprise, surprise, Seth is a husband and a father now. He ain't got a talk. Got ain't got time to be. Billy Badass out there. He's just trying to get backstage to his wife and hopefully his daughter while this crazed guy gets taken down. And as you pointed out earlier, he, you don't know what this guy has on him, but he could have snuck in there. He could have had a knife. And do you know what? Most arenas have security and some of them have metal detectors. Maybe that arena didn't have it. That they just checked the bags. Work. I know uh, TD Place. They just checked the bag. That's yeah, it. Like, not everyone's going to go through 100%. Though. Sometimes people find ways to sneak things in. So, you know, you can never be too careful when someone jumps the route. It's like when you're on stage during a concert, you don't jump on stage because when that happens, a lot of times a singer will just get your ass off of there. It happened during a Lamb of God show over in Europe where they were doing a show, a fan jumped onto the stage, and Randy Blythe threw him off the stage and killed the guy. And he got away with it because it was self-defense. It was self-defense. Because, because the guy was drunk and a fucking idiot. You don't jump on stage during a concert, and you don't jump the guardrail during a wrestling show. Or if there's no guardrail, you don't jump in a goddamn ring to fight the wrestlers. You no, fucking then, moron. Because then all the wrestlers in the ring and the referee and all the security are all going to take turns kicking your ass. And then they're going to ban you from the venue. Yep. Some of the wrestlers will remember you, too. I'm almost, and, certain, I'm almost certain like there's like something on the tickets saying don't jump the guardrail. Don't fucking do it. Yeah. And this transitions into the second what the wrestling fuck. 
and this is directed to a Twitter user named Jobber Nation. Oh, this motherfucker. This okay, I don't, I don't know this one. Be happy you don't. It's I, a I guess I'm about to find out how happy I was. I was. Less than 12 hours, a little under a day after this attack, he goes on this little Twitter rant stating that he believes that the, um, that, that in other, uh, either somebody on the AEW roster or Tony Khan himself put him up to it. He was basically saying that AEW was responsible for Seth Rollins' attack. And I'm like, what? Really? You're going to do this shit now? Oh really? Oh my God. How many haters do we have to tell? You're right, T Dub. I was happy. I w oh my God. Yeah, sometimes it's better to be to live in ignorance, especially in this case. And I yeah. was, and I was, and I thank you for 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 bringing it up and, 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 and completing this segment of what the wrestling fuck with this. Yeah. And when fucking he, when Mark. And we got when he got called out on it and shown that the guy was not an AEW Mark, but in, indeed a WWE Mark. He deleted the tweet. Oh, the good old tweet and delete. Ah, yep. fuck. You know what? I'll give props trolls. to Chavo. Gotta I'll love him. I'll give props to Chavo. He did not tweet and delete. No. No, Chavo doubles down. This, this no, he fucking didn't double down. He apologized. Chavo apologized. Oh, he did? Oh. Yeah, he at least had the goal to apologize for what he said. All right. Okay, he's, yeah, all right. Yeah. he's off the hook. Jobber Nation, yep. go fuck yourself. Yeah, Chavo at least said, you know, I'm not going to tweet and delete. However, I will apologize. Yeah. Oh, oh, and for people worried about him finding me, I know my Twitter information's on there. You know what I'll do? If he he, he, he comes at me, calling him, call him out for being a fucking idiot, you know what I'll do? <whistles> block. Before I blocked him, I sent him one I sent him one and only tweet in reply to this. I just said, an opinion is like an asshole. Everyone has one, and unfortunately, yours is stinky. Good call. Very much so, because Jesus Christ, the... the like he comes after me, I'm not even going to dignify him with a fucking response. He will be I, blocked immediately. I don't understand the absolute like. What's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? The tribalism. Tribalism when yeah. it comes to like wrestling companies, like the companies, they're not going to pay your bills. They're not giving you money. Don't no. be tribalistic no. about them. What they do, the, these companies, they want to take your fucking money. Mm -hmm. that's why when companies do good we praise them but when we, they do bad we criticize them just like when I did earlier when I was criticizing AEW for making such a big deal out of the gun club which just like I said feels like a step down for Darby Allen mm -hmm. we, and, we were, and we were criticizing Cody Rhodes because his character is stale while see, every yeah. other member of, his elite, of the elite crew attempted or at least evolved yeah so that's you know that's why I don't never understand tribalism one way or another, why people have to feel like, oh, this company is so perfect and this other one's terrible. Like, no, there are good and bad for all these companies, just varying degrees, depending on what you like in wrestling. It's just, come on, use your brain, people. The, 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 the true wrestling fans yeah. are those who had two TVs watching both Nitro and Raw at the same time. Yeah. I swear, and if there was Twitter around during the Monday Night Wars, I can only imagine the toxicity of it. And moreover, I mentioned this. I mentioned this on Twitter, and I'll say it right. I say it again here. It does not matter about which show you like better. This is, with this come when it comes to this situation, you should care about the health and well-being of the stars. We don't watch Raw. We don't watch SmackDown. We don't watch any product. But you're damn certain we were like, "Is Seth okay? Yeah, yeah. is Seth okay?" We we cared for 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 a minute. I'm like, dude, that that that's why I said you fucking idiot to the fan. For Seth, I'm yeah. like, dude, I hope, yeah. Dude could have cracked yeah. the rib, broken neck, broken arm, broken ankle. Well, even then, even then, just charging at Seth could have pulled a muscle on him. And mm -hmm. he would have been out for the rest of the year. Now, and, I'm pretty yeah, sure and, he would have appreciated the the one-on-one -on -one baby time, but and moreover, has got to work. And moreover... Imagine how his wife must have felt. She was backstage, and she sees some black roly-poly bastard uh, Goldberg, her husband, out of nowhere, and she was probably the first one to meet him backstage when he got backstage. How do you think she must have felt? I'm pretty sure she was pissed that she didn't get the first shot. That, too. 
By the, the way, folks, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish taking on uh, Wheeler Utah and Orange Freshly Squeezed Cassidy kicking off uh, Rampage Live. Nice. <laughs> of course, Adam Cole. <laughs> and Adam Cole rocking the pink. Absolutely. Because he don't stink. Nope. This will be out of context, but you never go ass to mouth. Just saying. No. <laughs> and for those who get it, you get it. If not, clerks too. Mm -hmm. and, and the match is being refereed by the undefeated Rick Knox. Ooh. Good call. Good call. Anyways, uh, anyone else got any other news? I think that's mm, it. Not that I know of. Oh, I guess we have time. I guess we should review Survivor <laughs> Yeah, here's a review. Of, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think I might have a bun for this. I, I think I, I think I have the setup for this. I just need to find the... Aha! Ladies and gentlemen, here's our review of Survivor Series 2021. You serious? Serious? Let's start for winners and losers, boys. All right, D cell battery award. Easy enough. That fat fuck who who speared Seth Rollins. <laughs> just you, sir. Just uh, I'd almost feel bad for you if if you weren't <laughs> just an unrepugnant and unrepentant piece of crap. Ugh. See, see, folks. This is why we keep Shin Tiger Curl around. He could throw. He, he could throw down a, a, on another guy. Yeah. As for my as my general loser, Survivor Series for just being midland. Some I heard there were some decent matches, but overall mid, midland, just, just midland. MJF mid. Yeah. How's and, that not uh, a button by now? It should be. It Make should. It. it should be. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I may need to work on that. Do so. I think I will. And, and um, last win last loser will be Jobber Nation. Just I actually looked at his profile and he said he uh, he just fairly um, reviews wrestling, but it is clear that he has a bias oh, for the WWE. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me hit it button. Let me hit it again. Do it again. <laughs> You serious? Serious? Yep. His his entire wall was just filled with conspiracy theories about how AEW does this and does this and just says a lot of positive stuff about WWE. So I'm like, yeah, it's hard to be fair and balanced when you're just so goddamn biased. So yeah, Jabra Nation, you suck. And I'm done. T Dub. I got one loser this week. That fucking egg. But, but there will be a match between that, that fucking golden egg and an inanimate carbon rod, and the toaster will fight the winner. Call it now. Matter of fact, you know how I know the egg, uh, the egg will face the toaster? It got released this week. Please uh, be... The egg is the is the Eva Marie of inanimate objects. <laughs> Oof. Well, it's not. No, hey, 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 hey. The Kelly Kelly. At least it has an ounce of talent. It, the egg can't run, run the ropes here. Come on. Exactly. Eva Marie can't wrestle for shit. Kelly Kelly tries. Okay, I'll give you that. So, At least, okay, you know, the, egg try. the egg will try. Okay, I'll I, I, I retract my statement. There you go. <laughs> Let's put the egg over a little bit. It was a meme for a week, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, for me, obviously, the dumbass and, uh, and WWE. Um, just in general. Just with the egg thing and all that, you know. Winners, boys. Let's do winners. Okay, the, the winner was very hard to pick this week. I mean, there was just so much competition. Who the fuck are we kidding? It was that goddamn promo. 
Yes. <laughs> Jesus, man. I mean, that's <laughs> Talk about a way to start a feud. You could throw going out there throwing bombs. It's just round one, boys. You, well, this is, we can't have a we can't have a Hearns versus yeah, Hagler. That's situation. the crazy part. That was round one. Jesus Christ, round two is gonna be nuclear. Yeah, just to, if they're building up towards uh, revolution, then that looks like it's not gonna happen until March, early March. Yeah. This could turn could into be, the could Western be a group. battle of the belts special of uh, special match or something like that if they don't want to stretch it that long. But holy crap, that's still quite a few weeks of just that's a few weeks. That's a few promos weeks of that we're going to be getting. That's next. That's next year. That's a that's an, enough time to build up to a, to a white hot match. Yeah, and that's going to happen it's... in North Carolina. Yeah, uh, the yeah, one they, thing they, that they, sucks they... about losing Kenny Omega for a while. We're not going to be able to hear that. Well, yeah, if the, you if, probably cured if you're there during the commercial break because uh, here in Norfolk, he was like, how many people here we got from Virginia? All right, how many people we got from Nevada, Michigan, South Carolina? And then there's a huge pause. North Carolina! <laughs> <laughs> it's it, Justin Roberts. He knows how to work a crowd. Uh, yeah. Everyone knows how to fucking work a crowd. Well, most of them, like, anyway. If, like, when you think of Route Ring... JC out, brings up another about... point for another good uh, spot for MJF versus Punk. Winter is coming. It could happen there. That's a fair point. They're, yeah, they're they're absolutely. Events. They have a few events. They have a few yeah. events. They could definitely build it up to that. If this is if this was round one, we could be looking at the wrestling equivalent of Herms versus Hagler, a.k.a. The War. This oh. is gonna... You know what's crazy? Uh, I mentioned last week that I've been uh, doing a deep dive on uh, on YouTube with some bad boxing matches. That match in full is, is in there, and uh, yeah. I don't know if it's available in the states. I, I did. It could be copyright blocked in certain countries, so I, I'm not going to dare say if it's available or not. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Tommy the Hitman Hearns versus Marvelous Marvin Hagler, two of the four kings, going having the one of the best boxing matches you will ever see. And it is only, it? it's only four rounds. It's four rounds, but it's a fucking war each and every one of those rounds. That's why they call it, they don't call it a fight. They call it the war. Like, in boxing, there's, there's, there's strategy where, yes, you want to harm your opponent, you want to knock him out. But in boxing, there's the idea of out-punching your opponent, out-boxing your opponent. That's why you have the judges at the end of the fight. So, there's no pretense of out-boxing. It's a fucking fight. We're looking at the yeah. promo or the promo equivalent of that right now. If it goes like that, yep. And I could easily, I could easily see that. And it doesn't have to be one on one in the ring. It could be like promo. They could be backstage promos and rebuttals and all that stuff. That there are plenty, a plethora of ways to 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 to, to, to keep this going. Plethora. Up. Yes. Didn't you do your winners? Oh, I should do that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going <laughs> to give my winner to that. Yeah, MJF Sam Punk promo. Just absolutely excellent. Blew everything else out of the water this week. I don't think any – that might be promo of the year. Goddamn. And gets, that knocked off Kingston versus, uh, versus Punk as promo of the year. Uh, you know what? If people still want to choose – Punk and Kingston over Punk MJF as promo of the year. I think it's subjective. I I would I would not knock the decision because Mox for, because Kingston versus Punk sold a pay per view a pay per view matchup on one promo alone. This is the, and Punk and Punk MJF is literally the opening punches. So, who knows. But uh, that's a thing. Uh, for me, well, obviously, AEW had obviously Punk versus MJF, the promo battle. Good loud. What a fight. What a promo. What a promo. Uh, I think my promo of, the, <laughs> promo of the decade, uh, too early to tell. And it's only 2021. Decades barely started. I don't know if that, that's the right idea, but... Yeah, uh, early contender. I'll, I'll take early contender on that. 
thoughts, boys, or am I alone again? Alone again. You're alone on the road again. <laughs> plug Thank away, you. boys. Plug away. Nothing much to plug. Maxicorn on YouTube for all of your War Machine and Hordes lore goodness. Uh, not sure when I'm going to uh, stream again. I was planning to do some streaming, but then family stuff popped up. But next time I do a stream, I'm definitely going to do a deep dive into the lore of War Machine and Hordes. Trust me, if you like Warhammer 40K, you will love War Machine, especially because everyone in War Machine is not complete assholes and everything is not horrible, horrible grimdark. So get on that. And that's all I got for right now. Deed up. Of course, got my YouTube channel. Check it out there. Got a AAA Heroes of Ring video going up there sometime in the next few days. Then nice. I'm currently working on another review as we speak. And if you want to see any of that stuff early, just go to patreon.com slash Reviews. That's patreon.com slash Reviews. But of course, YouTube channel, link right in the comment section. Go click on that to watch my videos. You know, I bricked my PS3 last night. Long story short, I... Uh... My coffee, uh, my uh, little desk coffee table thing was next to the shelf, uh, the shelf segment that held the PS3. And as of right now, I'm just leaving it unplugged. But the last game I played, Heroes Del Rey. Nice. There you go. And of course, on our end, if you want any questions, any uh, any short firm questions or uh, uh, comments, the Russellcast at gmail.com, or you can put them in the YouTube uh, in my uh, YouTube comments. It's there for that too. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at MetaJ316, at TWK Official, and at ShinTiger Curl. I am on TikTok at, at MetaJWC. Uh, T-shirts, the Discord is in the Twitch chat as well, and all that good stuff. Uh, join us, won't you? Uh, but that's going to do it. Of course, uh, uh, T-Dub's uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash Reviews, And, of course, uh, my uh, tip jar, paypal.me slash MetaJ316, or 316, if you will. Uh, donations are optional, but always appreciated. That's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much for tuning in and all that good stuff. Enjoy the rest of Rampage. This is a great tag team match going on right now, by the way. Those, those four are not going to a good one in, in Atlanta, in Hot Atlanta. On behalf of, of a good British and Tiger Curl. You my sunshine. You make me happy. Gather great. And TWK. And oh, here we go. I'm TWK, work your gimmick, and the feud I predicted is now real. I predicted this. It's happening now. What? Guevara we'll versus the premier athlete. Yo, here we go, baby. Two, two lightweight high flyers. Oh! Uh, Shenanigans! Oh. Uh, T Dub said you, you said you worked your gimmick, right? See. Si. See? Si. Okay. Manage everyone, you help professional wrestling support your independent promotion as soon as possible. Holy shit, is all I'm gonna say there. Watch Rampage. Context is for Rampage at this point. Have a good one, have a safe one. We'll talk to you next week, folks. At 8 30 Eastern. 7.30 uh, uh, Central. Have a good one. Have a safe one. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Nothing. No clues, nothing, right? Huh? Just nothing. Have any idea the value of this egg? Oh, bollocks.